Welcome to Live Doth, your online Doth Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Yevamai's Daf Yud Gimel. We are holding five lines from the top of the Yomit. Keitzad poitur sarasein v'chul. In the Mishnah we learned that an erva is potter from Yibum. We have Reuben, who passes away without children, happens to have been married to Rachel and Leah. Rachel was Shimon, the surviving brother's relative, his daughter, his mother-in-law. She will not be eligible for Yibam with Shimon, because if she was simply his brother's wife, then she's a Yivama. There's Yibam. But if in addition to that, she's also a different type of Arab, his daughter. Shimon's mother-in-law. Yibam doesn't apply by Arayas. Not only that, just as the erva is potter from Yibam, it carries over, it affects the Tzora as well. So Reuben was married to Rachel and Leah, just as Rachel is potter from Yibam. Leah, the Tzora, the other wife, is also potter from Yibam. She's a Tzora's erva. Because she was present together with the erva in a Yibam situation so it's all or nothing. If part, if one element in that household is exempt from Yibam, it affects everybody else. Not only that, says the Mishnah. Just as the Tzoras Erev is Asr, Tzoras Tzoras Erev is Asr, which means that if this Tzoras Erev, Leah, marries another brother, and that other brother happens to have another wife at the same time, then that brother happens to pass away. And Shimon is back, I'm back, uh, on the Yavam stand, he's the potential Yavam, just as the Tsaras Erva, Leia, who is a Tsaras Erva to Shimon, is exempt from Yavam, the other wife as well becomes exempt. So the Tsaras Erva affects her Tsara, and that Tsara will affect her Tsara, and so on and so forth. How do we know this concept? How do we know it extends all the way to the Tsaras Tsara? Minhan Emili. Omar Vida Damakro, the Pasuk says, Let's run. Instead of just saying Lotzer, that the Tzoros Erva is Asr, Litzrer, that extra uh, Vav Reish, tells us that there are multiple manifestations to Tzoros Erva. Torah Ripsa, Tzoros Harbe. Torah added many types of, many variations of Tzoros. So the Erva affects her Tzoros, who goes ahead and affects her Tzoros, so on and so forth. Ravashi Amar, Svarahi, without a Pasuk, we could just figure it out on our own. It's a svar. Plain logic. Why? So my time asira. Why is the initial tsaras erva asr? erva kaima because she was present together with the erva in a yibum circumstance. So now she herself is relabeled as an erva. It sort of carries over. The erva status carries over to the tsar. She's not considered an erva on her own. So when she turns around and marries another brother and there's another wife there, who's the Tzaras Tzaras Erva, Nami B'mokim Erva Kaima. That Tzaras Tzara is in the company of an Erva. Because I've just said the Tzaras Erva becomes an Erva. So there's no difference between Tzaras Erva, who's affected by the Erva, and the Tzaras Tzara, who's affected by the Tzaras Erva, who herself is already an Erva. So the two answers to the question. How do we know a tzara tzara is asr? Either from a pasik or it's a svara. No, the Achorinim explain that apparently Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Ashi have different approaches to the, to the halacha of tzara tzara, different perspectives on how to understand it. Rabbi Yehuda held that the reason why a tzara's erva is pasik is because the erva affects her. It spills over. It, 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 it's a ptur. It's a the erva affects her tzara. How do we know that Tzara can do the same to her Tzara? We need a Pasuk. Rav Ashi, on the other hand, learns. It's a Svara. He learns that the, the uh, concept of Erva spills over into the Tzara. The Tzara becomes like her own Erva right now. She has, uh, she's internally identified as an Erva. And therefore, when she's present with another Tzara, well, that Tzara is now Tzara's Erva. It's not an external factor. It's an internal factor. So she's like a regular erva. The tzara's erva is considered like an erva. So now when the tzara's tzara is in her presence, 
She's like she's just like in the presence of an erva. And so on and so forth, down the line, it just keeps on going. Kate said the Mesu Hain Mission says that if Reuben was married to Shimon's daughter, Rachel, it affects the other Tzara as well, it affects the other wife Leah. But that's only if the erva was around, was present, was alive, was still married to to Reuben when he passed away. In which case she joined the Tzara in the Yibam circum the Yibam situation. But if she left the scene beforehand, the erva passed away before the husband passed away. In which case at the time of Yibam she wasn't there. She wasn't a potential candidate for Yibam. Or if she was divorced, she wasn't around. And she won't affect the Tzara. Because the determining factor is the point of Yibam. That's the determinant. She wasn't there, then the uh, other fellow, the other woman, is not a Tzara Tzara. Do you mean to say, even if Ruven was married to the, the Arab, married to Rachel, who is Shimon's daughter, and then Kanas, he married Leah, second wife. So actually, Rachel and Leah were um, in the presence of each other, part of the same household during Ruven's lifetime. Then he Sends away Rachel. He's Megarish, he divorces the Arab. Which brings us to the point of Yibam, meaning at the time of Reuben's death, only Leah was around. Erva wasn't here. That's okay. Leah doesn't identify herself as a Tsaras Erva because the Erva was long gone before before Reuben passes away. So in this case, she's not identified as a Tsaras Erva despite the fact that she experienced Rachel's presence at some point during this marriage. They were together in the same household, household for a limited time. That doesn't affect her in any way. Because she wasn't together with her during the point of Yibam, when Reuben passes away. Is that so? Vraminu have a kasha from another Mishnah which indicates otherwise that as long as the Tzara was in the company of an Erva, any, any time throughout their husband's lifetime, they were affected by each other. Even if they were not there together with Shas Yibam. Gimel Achim. You have three brothers. Reuben, Shimon, and Leah. Shneiman, both two brothers, two of the three, Reuben and Shimon, Nesu and Bezachais, happen to be married to two sisters. Reuben to Rachel, Shimon to Levi. Ve'echad Nasri Nachris. Third brother, Levi, is married to a, a non-relative of these two sisters. He's married to uh, Bilha. Girish Echad Mi Balachais. As Ishtoi, Reuben, Divorces Rachel. Umeis Hanasi Nachris. Levi, who is married to Billah, passes away. His wife, Billah, is now a Yevama. And who was Miyabim her? Vikon Sahamagarish. Ruvain, the one who sent away Rachel, now takes over Billah. He does Yibam to Billah. So Billah never saw, never experienced Rachel, was never together with Rachel in the same household. Rachel was long gone by the time Billah showed up. And came onto the scene. Umeis and Reuben passes away. Is Bila considered an erva to Shimon? Not at all. Is she considered a tsaris erva to Shimon? Not at all. Even though Reuben happened to have been married to Shimon's wife's sister previously, but he sent her away. She was not there, but she asked Yibam. Bila, the new wife, Reuben's new wife never saw Rachel. She was never with her in the same household. So the concept of Megarish Omeis. So Reuven married Bilal and then he passes away. Zohi Sha'amru. She Omeisu and Izgarishu. Here we apply the concept that if the Erva passes away or she's divorced, Zohar is saying Mutaris. Their fellow wives are Mut. The second wife is Mut. The competing wife is Mut. Because in this case she never was present with her in the same household. She was long gone by the time Villa arrived. That's the mission. Let's make a deal. Only in this case does it work. Because she never saw her. Reuben got rid of Rachel before, way before Villa showed up. They were never together in the same household. Time of the Girish. It only works because Reuben divorced Rachel and then married Villa. 
So Rachel and Bilal were never together in the same household at all. Avokonas v'achkach girish. But perhaps if Reuven had married Bilal, added her to the family, and then divorced Rachel, it wouldn't work because at one at one point they were together in the same household. Despite the fact that they weren't together during the time of Yibam, Rachel was long gone before Reuben passed away, but they were together in the same Nisu, in the same marriage. They affect each other. Bill is considered a Tzaras Erva. This is very much in contrast with our Mishnah, which teaches us otherwise. Unless they were together during the point of Yibam, they don't affect each other. We have a steer. Which way is it? Amar Yirmiya Tavra. You have to break up the Mishnahs. Two different opinions. It's a machlaikis. Mishnah Shanazu, Lishanazu. The Tana who learned this Mishnah did not learn the other Mishnah. There's a fundamental machlaikis here. Hai Tana Savar. The Tana of our Mishnah, who maintains that the defining point is the moment of Yibam, the moment of Ruvain's Misa. That's what determines the status of the Tzara. He holds, Haitana Savar Misa Mapelis. What activates the Yibam process? Ruin's death. That's the defining moment. So unless the Erva was present at that moment, she's not reckoned with. We don't care about the fact that Rochel and Leah, or in this case, Rochel and Bilo were together in the same marriage, in the same household. That's long gone. Old news. As long as they weren't together in a Yibam capacity. The Haitana Savar, whereas the other Tana holds, no. If at any point in time during this marriage we had the erva with this isha together, it affects the tzara, makes our tzara's erva. Despite the fact that the erva was no longer here when her, their husband passed away in a yivam setting, doesn't matter. Why? The initial marriage is what activates the subsequent yivam process later. Basically, what it means to say is that the the yavam sort of overtake takes over, continues the departed brother's marriage. So the initial nesuin is what determines the halacha. And if any time throughout that marriage, Rachel was present, Rachel the erva was here, it affects anybody around her. All the other wives are considered tzara's erva, despite the fact that Rachel left the scene before their husband died. She didn't take part in the even process, doesn't matter. Rav Amar Lo'ilam Chatanahu Both missions reflect the same shita, they're authored by the same tana. Yibum is what determines. Vizoi, and the Mishnah over here in that base, tells it to us in a, in a, uh, a grand way, a big chiddush. Even if the erva was here sometime throughout the marriage, it doesn't matter. As long as they, they were not together when the husband passed away, in a Yibum setting. So that concept is reflected in our Mishnah. If ain't and then the Mishnah later says, look, and certainly in the other case, when she never even saw her. Uh, the ever was gone, was divorced before the other woman came by. You don't even have to say that. To that. That's, that's obvious. That's, there's a formula like that in, in Mishnayis. First we say the real Chiddush. You should know this is the real Chiddush. And certainly in that case. So according to Rava, all agree to this concept. Tzar Tzar is a Yibam concept. If the Erva was together with this Isha at the time of Yibam, in a Yibam setting, in a Yibam household, it affects the Erva, it affects the Tzara. But if she was gone, she left the scene prior to Reuven's passing, it doesn't affect the Tzara. And the Tzara is eligible for Yibam with the other brother. The mission spoke about Iktana. Iktana does not have Kiddushin in Minatayra. You can't marry Iktana Minat Torah. Chacham Masakan, for the benefit of all, that the Iktana can be married off by a family, the mother, the brother, can marry her off. It's a Kedushan Midraban, but Mi'un can cancel, can delete that Kedushan. She turns, she turns her back on the husband, she rejects her husband, she walks away from him. What happens in the case of Yibam, where Reuben, Reuben and Shimon, Rav Reuben who passed away without children, he was married to Rachel and Leah, Rachel happened to be the surviving brother's uh, relative, daughter, 
mother-in-law. Rachel was uh, a ktana, not a mother-in-law, <laughs> a daughter, a sister, and she was a ktana. Will she affect the other wife? Leia, the tzara of this erva, is she potter as well? The mission says, not really, because Rachel's marriage wasn't really a bona fide marriage. She wasn't really Reuben's wife, Minatera, so how could she exempt the other woman from Yibam? How could she affect the Din Tur? So whoever has the ability to be a mind, it's another way of saying, Aktana was married to the brother, and she actually stuck it out. She didn't walk off on him. But since her marriage is only a partial marriage, an incomplete marriage, we can't say, well, the competing wife, the tsara, is affected by her. She's pata because she's tsara's erva. What then do we do? We do chalitza. Strike a compromise. Shimon is not going to be me yabim, the other wife. But chalitza will do. So I well, what's the dilemma? What's the problem here? Easy solution. Let's do mean right now. And undo. Usurp. Uproot. The entire marriage. With the Moin Hashtav, this Yabim. Let Rachel, the Ktana, the Erva to Shimon, walk over to Shimon the Yabim and say, Look, I'm not, interested in the, I'm not interested in this whole business. I never really want. And she'll undo the entire marriage. It's as though she was never married to Reuben in the first place. She was never his wife. She's certainly not a contender for Yibam. She's off the scene. It's a retroactive, has a retroactive effect. So now the other wife is free to be Miss Yabim. She's unaffected by any Arab who left the scene retroactively. Why can't she do that? Oh, Leima Messiah, the Rab Yosh. Perhaps he's the right Rabbi Yosh. Don't Rabbi Yosh. Because Machlech is later on in Yibamis, whether you can do Yibam after death, whether you can do Mion in the presence of a Yavam. She can walk away from her husband. She can reject him. But once he passes away and she's up to the point of Yibum, is it too late? Bishama say yeah. Bishil Basil say no. You can still do Yibum. You can still do Mio now. Rav Aisha explained as follows. Even according to Basil, it's a limited Mion. You can't undo the entire Zika. Zika is the term used for uh, that obligation, that commitment to Yibum, that potential Yibum. You can't undo Yibum candidacy. You can't do that. What then is the Mi'un going to do? So if the Yibam did Ma'amar, which is sort of a Kiddushan to the Yibam, gave her money as a Kiddushan, typically a get is required to undo that. But if the Katana so chooses to be Ma'amar and say, look, I'm not interested in your Ma'amar, it can undo that. So it can save her from a get, but she can't undo the Zika. She can't remove her potential Yibam candidacy. She can't say, well, I'm not interested in the Yibam, I don't want to uproot the entire marriage with my former husband, the one who passed away. She can't do that. It's too late for that. It would seem that our, our mission supports that view. Otherwise, why can't our Ketana just walk over to the Yavim and say, look, I'm not interested and undo everything and become a non-factor, a non-player in the equation? Says the Gemara, no, we had to do the Rabbana. Look, Tzaras Erva Shami. Here we're dealing with Tzaras Erva. The question is whether Rachel the Ktana affects the other woman. Do we consider the other woman a Tzaras Erva? Here it's different. Chacham wa Machna. As she says, Rabbana Gozru. Shaloi Teman. She shouldn't do Yibum to enable Yibum the Yibum Tzarasa to enable Yibum by the Tzara. Why? The Loi Lizel Zuli but Tzaras Erva Dilma Asri Lemishri. You don't want to take things lightly. Start reinventing the wheel. Start moving around the, uh, reforming uh, the equation after death. Doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't sound too good. And create a zilz. People will take the Indian of tzaras erva lightly. In other words, even though technically, strictly halachically speaking, the Ktana could just walk off, and it's going to be effective retroactively. In which case, she was never a player on the scene. Erva was never here. She was a Ktana. Was never married to. But it's after the fact. It's after Misa already. She's already Yevama. It looks too real and tangible. And if we allow this procedure to take place and go and marry the Tzara, and ignore the fact that she was a, a fellow wife of this Erva, people will take the entire concept of Tzara's Erva lightly. The Tani Rami Bari Cheskel. We find a similar concept in the following price. Miyana Bebal. 
with Teres Lavev. So Diktana was Memayin in her husband. She walked off her husband. She rejected her husband. So she could marry her husband's father. Reuben, the father of Shimon, who she, who she rejected. Because one may marry a woman who was involved with his son as long as she wasn't really his wife. In this case, she wasn't really his wife, but actively. She's not considered Reuben's daughter-in-law. But Miyana Biyabam. But suppose Shimon the son passed away and now Levi's the Yabam. She walks off on the Yabam. I'm not interested. Asur Lavav. She may not marry Reuben, who was Shimon's father. Why? What's the difference? The answer is Alma apparently Mishas in the fila. Once there's a Nafila here, somebody passed away and there's a potential Yabam, it's too official, it's too formal. Near is Kekalase. It gives it. It feels like the. It looks like the marriage was a legitimate marriage, was an established marriage. Look, look what it did. It brought about yibum. It's already at the next point. It's already at second base. To go ahead and say, oh, undo the whole thing. Nearest kekalasi. She looks like she was married to his son Shimon, and therefore Reuben shouldn't marry her. Hachnam here as well in our sukkah. Rachel was Aktana, married to Reuben. She was Shimon's daughter. Reuben was married to Leah as well. Leah is considered a somewhat Tzaras Erev because she was together with Rachel in the same household. She fell together to leave and the question was, why can't Rachel just walk off, do me and undo the entire system? She was never married to Rachel retroactively, to, to Reuben retroactively. The answer is, Hachanami here as well, Mishas Nefila. At the time of Nefila, Leivam. Nearest to Tzaras it appears like Leah is already Tzaras Bitoi. It's been established as a fact. Look, Ruvain, the former husband, passed away. There, Yevama is waiting for Yibam. We have Rachel, who is the Tzara, who is the Erva, a daughter of Shimon. We have Leah, who is the Tzara's Pitoi. It's too real, it's too formal to go ahead and undo, undo it after the fact. And if we're going to be matter in this case, Asi Lemishri says, Rashi, Asi Lemishri, Tzara Sabas Ba'alma. It's going to lead people to take things lightly, perhaps lead them to be matter at Tzara Sabas, uh, a conventional Tzara Sabas. Okay, so we learned three aspects here. We learned about Tzara Tzara. We have two sources for that. If the Erva left the family, the Tzara is not considered Tzara's Erva. At what point does she have to leave? Well, if she left before the uh, other, other women arrived in the family, it certainly works. But if they saw each other, experienced each other, and she only left before the Yibum came to being, we have a shadow of whether that works. Technically, a Katana could just undo the entire system, but we have a zero, we try to prevent it. Continues the Mishnah, Sheish Arayis, the following six Arayis, are actually more stringent and severe than those 15 Nasha mentioned in the first Mishnah. You know what the difference is? Because they can only marry strangers. So we have several brothers here, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yudah. In the first Mishnah we spoke about limited arayas. Rachel was Shimon's daughter. She was married to Reuben. That's, that's legal. It's fine. Rachel was uh, Shimon's sister with whom he shares a, a, a mother. She can marry Reuben with whom he shares a father. She's not a relative. The following six are more severe. These arayas are usher to all brothers equally. So it's impossible for them to marry Reuben and be usher on Shimon. If she's usher on Shimon, she's usher on Reuben. They, only, they can only marry strangers out of this family. And therefore, Tzara Sein Matoris. In that case, there's no concept of Tzara Sein which is a Yibam concept. So, if any of these women were married to a stranger who happened to have another wife with them, that lady's not a Tzara Erva because she didn't join that Erva in a Yibam situation. As opposed to the case we were discussing until now, let's say, Rachel's daughter married to, Sh- to Ruvain. Rachel's daughter. Shimon's daughter married to Ruvain. So although she's an Ervan Shimon, but she's not an Ervan Reuben. So in this case, Reuben passes away. Rachel is a potential Yibam candidate. So she, not only is she part of but the Tzara. The other, the other woman that was married to Reuben is considered Tzara's Erba because she was together with her in a Yibam situation. But this doesn't apply in these, in these six Arayas who never encounter a Yibam situation. Which, which ones are we speaking about? Imai, his mother. It's just of his mother's, his father's wife. 
So all these women are asa to all brothers equally. Achayis Aviv, sister of his wife. Achayis Emei Aviv, his sister with whom he shares a father. So again, that's uh, it's an Isra, it's universal. All the brothers cannot marry her. So you realize all these are father-related Isra, father-related relationships. Achayis Aviv, his father's sister. Achayis Emei Aviv, his sister with whom he shares a father. Veishas Achi Aviv, the wife of his father's brother. Veishas Achav Mei Aviv, his brother's wife, with whom he shares a father. And we're speaking, of course, that she has children, so she's not eligible for Yibam. And this Isha is also to all the brothers who share a father. Until this point in the Masech that we discussed the Isra of Tzaras Erva. It was a given, it was a fact. Tzaras Erva is Potter is Asr. But actually, it's not so simple. It's a machlaikis between Hisham and Yisro. This concept of Tzaras Erva is a point of dispute between Bishamai who are matir and Tzoros Lach and they say Tzoros Erva is mutter you can't marry an Erva even in the Yibam context but the Tzoros Erva is mutter she goes to Yibam now as a result of that Nachlikis we have a question regarding Chalitz so according to Bishamai Tzoros Erva is a perfect Yivam she's meant to do Yibam or Chalitz so that's how she does Chalitz we know that a Chalitz on each of who underwent the chalitza procedures, Asr Lekayin. So Tzoros Erva, who was meant to have chalitza, did chalitza, she is a chalitza. Bishami Poyislam Nakuna, she can't marry a kayin. But Ubei Zilil Machshir, they say she's mutter because it was a worthless procedure. She's an Ar, she's Tzoros Erva. Chalitza is not affected by Tzoros Erva, she doesn't require chalitza. So we could have just ignored the chalitza process, and she's not affected she can marry a kind. Likewise, the Tzaras ever does Yibam. Nis Yabmu, Bishami Machshir. She can marry a kind. The Yibam was legitimate. She did nothing wrong. She didn't marry somebody she was asked to marry. Ube Silil Pais, Sil Hold, that a Tzaras ever went through Yibam. Was engaged in an illegitimate relationship. Asr, she can't marry a kind after she becomes disqualified the Kuhuna. So basically, this is a fallout of the original Machlekes, of whether or not a Tzaras Erva is an ordinary conventional Yivama. Says the Mishra something interesting. Afopi, She'elu Oisrim, Be'elu Matir, although, Be'elu say Tzaras Erva is Asr, Be'elu say she's Mutter, E'elu Paislan, E'elu Machshirin, these hold that she's disqualified, those hold she's not disqualified, it didn't interfere with the way Be'esham and Be'esilo related to each other. They intermarried, they had camaraderie and peace and love. Shamai would not hesitate, would not refrain from marrying into Basilel. Veloy Basil and Beshamai, nor would Basil into Beshamai. Kolataris va tumas. Likewise, when it comes to halachis of Taris and Tumas, so many machlaikas show you Elum Matar and Elum Matam, and these will make tar, these would hold tummy. It wouldn't get in the way of their relationship, they would trust each other, they wouldn't hold back from Leah's Eisen Taharis from doing their uh, Taharis things, they're cooking their foods and um, doing all their Taharis, these with those, meaning they would use the Kalim of the other families to cook their food and to tend to the Taharis needs. Rashi brings the Gemara because they would trust each other that they would certain, certainly notify them in advance. Look, this Kli is actually Tommy according to your opinion. This Isha is Asr according to... They would trust them, that they would notify them in advance, give them the heads up. This was due to their L'Shem Shemaim attitude they had. They were fully trusting and dependent on each other. Amar Rabbi Shimon and Pasi. We understand why you're going to be still at Tzoros Erev's Asr. We had a whole Masechta about it. What about Beishamai? Why do they discount that Russia? My time at the Beishamai. The Chesiv Leitia, Eishes Hamais Hachutzal Ishzor. Eishes Hamais, the Isha of the departed fellow who passed away without children, the Yivama, should not go marry Hachutzal Le Ishzor to a stranger. What does Hachutzal mean? Hachutzal Mechlal. Apparently, the Ikapnimis. She's the external one. She's not related to the surviving brother. Apparently, there's somebody that is related. So she's together with an erva. So she's Leah, the Chutzah, who's not related to Shimon. But she's together with Rachel, who is Shimon, the Yavam's daughter. 
Rahman on the Pasuk says, Laitiya, she shouldn't marry anybody else, she should marry the Yavam. Apparently, it serves Erev's mut. So this explains that this Drasha will undo the Drasha of Beisilo. U Beisil, what did they do with this Pasuk? Me Boilu. They needed the Kravidamarav. Domar Vidamarav. Me Nayin, Shein, Kedushin, Taifsin, Be Yavam. How do we know that if one should approach a Yavam, a non Yavam, a stranger, wants to acquire the Yavam, wants to give a Kedushin, it doesn't work. In contrast to a typical Isha who's uh, only Chayav Ilavim, an Isha who uh, is not allowed to do something, right? not allowed to marry a certain person. There's a lav involved. It's not Kuras, just a lav in Isra. So typically, condition does work. You're not allowed to do it, but condition is effective at that point. Ivam is different. Although, she's also in this category of Chayav Ilavim. She's not allowed to marry out. It's only a lav, only tells a lav, but we have a special pasa. Condition doesn't work. We learn she can't have a vaya, which is another term for kedusha. She can't unite with a zar. How do we know this halacha? What do we do to counter a basilal's drasha? Right, they need the pasuk to tell you a tzaras ever's So how do they? What do they do to respond? How do they respond to basil? Mixiv lachutz. Does the pasuk say? She shouldn't marry out. She's a chutza. It's almost a, a description. It's a title. She is a chutza. Right? So it means she's external. She's the chitzaina. She's a non relative. Apparently, there is a relative on the scene, an erva. Erva's butter, but she is chayv. Ubisilu. What do they still do with the diuk of Eishamai? The Pasuk is just trying to tell you that she shouldn't marry out and she can't have kedushin to a stranger. She should have just said, Lachutz. Why does it say Chutza? They still they respond as follows. Given the Chsiv Chutza, the word Chutza is Kilman. The Chsiv the Chutz Dami has the same meaning as Lachutz. So in Diktuk, they both have the same definition. The Tanya. Call Teva. Any word. Which should have a prefix of a Lamed. Le this, Le that. The Torah we find substitutes a he at the end as a suffix for the prefix the lamed. Here are some examples. Before we get to the examples, so really just means you shouldn't marry out. She should go to the Yavim, not to a stranger. So chutza is like saying lachutz. Here are some examples. Could go in Elim. So he went to Elim and says, instead of Elim, it says Elima. Instead of Le Elim, Elima. Instead of Le Machanaim, it says Machanaim. Instead of Le Mitzrayim, it says Mitzrayim. Devlasayim, Yushalayim, Midbar. So Achutz just means Lachutz. You shouldn't marry out. Kedushin is ineffective. If Yavama chooses to ignore her Yavim and marry a stranger. Or Beishamai, what about Beishamai? How are they going to learn this halachad? Rav Yudam, Rav Benalu. How do we know the condition is not affected by Yavama? They certainly agree to that halacha. How do they know it? Milir zar nafka. The pasuk could have skipped hachutza. Leisia ish zameis. Leish zar. She shouldn't marry out. Hachutza is another halacha. To be matet tzaras erev. Ubesil nami tebeglu milir zar. What about Ubesil? Why couldn't they suffice with the word leish zar? If it's only to tell you that she shouldn't marry out. And achanam, you're right. Chutza lamli. The word chutza is coming to tell you nuhalach. What's it for? The rabbi sa'arusa, an engaged woman. So Reuven, the departed brother, was only engaged, only did kedushin on this isha, and then he passed away. Is she considered a yivama? Yes. Loitia isha means ha chutza. Even an isha who's still out of the fold, she hadn't really formalized her relationship. She's just an arusa. She's also a yivama. Vidach had a beishamay no this halacha. They've already used hachutza for something else. To be matet tzaras erva. It's unavailable for this. We still have a diuk. An extra hey at the beginning of that word. Mechutza. I could have just said chutza. And it says hachutza to tell you this halacha as well. Arusa is included in Yibam. Vidach. But Rabbi Sil. Chutza, chutza, lemashmul. They're not going to make a diuk from the extra hey. In this case, they don't apply it to a drash. It's a bottom line. It's according to Shimon Pasi. The reason why Beishamay matet tzaras erva. 
is based on the Pasuk, which says, Loisia, Eishis, Hamez, Hachutz, Lishzar. Chutzah denotes that she's external, she's not a relative to the Yavam. Mechlal Dika Prim is apparently, these are relative on the scene, and still doesn't affect the, the Chutzah. This other woman is unaffected, she falls the Yavam. Rava Amar, I'll tell you Pshat and Beishamai. Tamayi de Beishamai. Asbar, Alamdus. De'ein Isr, Chalal Isr. They hold that one Isr can't be applied to a pre-existing Isr. Capacity is full. You can't add more Isr. can't pile them up. So once, she's already Asr, on account of being his daughter. They have Reuven and Shimon. Reuven was married to Rachel and Leah. Rachel happens to be Shimon's daughter. Reuven passes away. Rachel, being Shimon's daughter, could not get more Isur. So when she married Reuven, she never, she never got that second title added to her. As far as Shimon is concerned, she's not going to be Asr on him on account of being his brother's wife. Because she's already Asr on him on account of being his daughter. Ain't Isr, Chalal Isr. And therefore, we don't have to reckon with the Erev. Which means that when Reuben passes away, she's not part of the Yibam equation. As far as Shem is concerned, the surviving brother, he he doesn't view Rachel as being the Yavama. He doesn't view her as being his brother's wife because she's already his daughter. She can't get that additional title. And therefore, the other wife, Reuben's second wife, Leah, is unaffected by Rachel the Erva because she didn't join her together in this Yibam equation. She wasn't there. She wasn't part of the Yibam equation. As far as Shem is concerned, she's not his brother's wife. So Rashi explains that actually this is going to be the conclusion of the Maskana of the Gemara. But we have to get there. So that's the Gemara Tenach. Okay, this is understood in the following case. This is going to work as follows. So the Gemara at this point figured this uh, mechanic will only work if, uh, if it's a, a erva by way of, of marriage. For instance, like this. One of the Arayas is Achois Ishtay. His wife's sister. Okay, let's see how it works. Tenach. Hecha denosames. It's going to work in the case where Reuven, the departed brother, married first. So we have Rachel and Leah. Sisters. Reuven married Rachel. Vachach nasachai. And then, uh, Shimon married, Shimon, the, the surviving brother, married Leah. So Rachel, uh, Reuven and Shimon. Reuven married Rachel. Shimon married Leah. Two sisters. In this case, was Rachel already Asr on Shimon? For sure. She was his brother's wife. So when he proceeded to marry Leah, Rachel's sister, Rachel is already Asr on account of being his brother's wife. She can't get that additional Isr and be considered his wife's sister. Right? Since it was a pre-existing Isr, she was titled as being brother's wife, she won't get that additional Isr bring his wife's sister. If so, the uh, when we have the Yibam situation that comes to play, Reuben passes away, leaving behind Rachel, leaving behind another wife as well. The other wife is unaffected by Rachel. Why? Because even to Shimon, Rachel is not considered his wife's sister. Because she's already considered his wife's his brother's wife, which is uh, which is fine when it comes to Yibam. His brother's wife is the Yibam. And therefore, the Tzor is unaffected. The other wife present in the Yibam scenario there is not considered Tzor's erva, because there's no erva. Rachel is simply Shimon's brother's wife. We don't reckon with the fact that he's sh- she's Shimon's wife's sister. Oh, asks this is a bomb cash. So go be miyavim the. Isha herself. Why can't Shimon just be Miyabin Rachel herself? All she is is his brother's wife. So he says like this because the other Isser, the fact that she's his wife's sister, hovers. It's a potential Isser which can land at any moment. Meaning, if you're going to be Mata Yibam and say, okay, let's remove the Isser of brother's wife, she's the Yibam, then boom, suddenly the other Isser will arrive. The only reason why, why the other Isser is being withheld, being suspended in the air, is because there's another, another Isser there. She's his brother's wife. But if you remove that for, to enable Yibam, you clear the route, you clear the way, you clear the runway, and the other one lands on you. And now she'll be considered his wife's sister going forward, and therefore she's an Arab. So that's not a that's not a, an option. You can't be a the actual Isha herself. But since right now she's only considered his brother's wife, although potentially she can also turn into his 
wife's sister, but that that's so premature. Hadn't yet happened. She's just considered his brother's wife, in which case she's not really an erva, and the other woman is not a terrorist erva. So that works. But in the following case, Ella, but let's say, let's say it's, the, it's the other way around. No so chai. We have Reuben and Shimon. Shimon, the surviving brother, married first. He married one of the sisters. He married Rachel. And then, Mace is referring to Reuben, he's going to pass away. Then Reuben married a sister later. Now, as soon as, as soon as um, Shimon, the surviving brother, married Rachel, Leah, the sister, wherever she was, became usher to Shimon, his wife's sister, before she married his brother Reuben. In that case, even when Reuben proceeded to marry the sister, married Leah, Achel is Isha Kadim. She's already also because of she's his wife's sister. She's Shimon's wife's sister. And therefore, she's an erva. So how can we say that every tzara is erva's mutter? It all depends on the situation. In this case, she's considered an erva. Even before she married Reuven, she was his wife's sister. She was Shimon's wife's sister before she became Shimon's brother's wife. So what are you going to do in that case? In that case... Reuven is otherwise should be us, a Taurus erva. Answer is, also, uh, this is what we said before, in the name of Rashi. No, that's not what the Gemara meant. The Gemara meant like this. In any case, in any erva situation that preceded, with the, with the Isra erva preceded her marriage, to Ruvain, the uh, departed brother. Rachel was Shimon's daughter, Shimon's sister, Shimon's wife's sister. In any case, where she was an erva before she married Ruvain, that's it. It fills the entire, the entire capacity. It's full. Full to capacity. You can't add another Isra. So even when she marries Ruvain, and she becomes Shimon's brother's wife. It's too late. It doesn't arrive. It doesn't land. It can't be applied because we have a pre-existing Isser right here. When she marries Reuven, the Isser of being Shimon's brother's wife will not come. Will not be applied. Can't be applied here. But Chayil won't be Chayil al Isser Achais Isha on the pre-existing Isser. For instance, Achais Isha, she's his wife's sister. Means like this. Once we consider uh, this Isha, an Erva, before she proceeded to marry Shimon's brother Reuven, she will not attain that new title of brother's wife. It can't happen. She's already Asr to Shimon. She's his daughter, sister, mom, whatever she is. She's already Asr. As far as Shimon is concerned, this Isha is not really his brother's wife. As we said earlier, she doesn't have the Isra Achosish, Sach. She doesn't have that title. And therefore, she's not a Yibam candidate, which is something that happens strictly by a, wife, a brother's wife. She's not his brother's wife, as far as he's concerned. She's his daughter. She's his wife's sister. Whatever Erva was speaking, it doesn't matter. Ain Isra Chal Isra. Therefore, she's not considered, she's not reckoned to be part of the Yibam arrangement. And the other wife is unaffected by her. Because remember, Tzara's Erva is strictly a Yibam concept. If the other wife joins the erva in a yibum situation, then she's affected. But this is not a yibum situation because once she was an erva before she married Reuben, she can't assume the status of brother's wife as far as Shimon is concerned. She's already else on account of something else. So she doesn't play a role in the yibum situation. And therefore, the tzara doesn't have to reckon with her. That's what Shama's approach to be mat tzara's erva. No, so what do we still hold? Strong argument here. So the Rashba says, true. Relative to Shimon, who's this woman's father, this woman's sister, she's not considered brother's wife. But relative to the other brothers, who are not related to Rachel, as far as they're concerned, she's their brother's wife. <laughs> so she is a, a partially of a somewhat of Yivama. Therefore, the uh, this will hold. We consider her Yivama, and the other woman, the Tzara, fell with her. We reckon them to be part of the same Yibum equation. And she's considered a Tzara Sarva. Interesting, Machlikas. So, bottom line is, according to Beshami, Tzara Sarva is Muta, either because of a Pasuk or because of a Sfar. 
So what results from this machlekes? How to view the chalitza by tzaras erva? Is it a required procedure? Is it a legitimate procedure? Does it affect the ish? Does it qualify from kahuna, or not? What about yibo? Is it acceptable or not? Chaltu, a tzaras erva does chalitza, the proper procedure. Does qualify? Disqualifies it from marrying a coin like any chalitza. B'shamay poisin. B'sil let's say it's muta. Chalitza is worthless. Pshita, of course, isn't this a natural? Outcome of their machlek is why do you have to spell it out? The value of the chalitza depends on the legitimacy of the chalitza. And says the Gemara lafuke to Rabbi Yech Benuri. We're coming to to undo. Rabbi Yech Benuri tells us the Amar Boyu Nesakin Lem Let's make a compromise. Even according to Basil, let's make a takana that tzaras ever should sheyu chalitzos levis yamus. Let them at least have chalitza with the ad yibum. No, Kamash the mission tells us no. The Basil Machshir. So, no, there's no Chalitza at all by Tsaras Erev. Even the Rabbana, therefore, if they go through Chalitza, there's no problem with the Kayim. We totally ignore the Chalitza process. The Siabmu, Basil of Paisal, if Tsaras Erev does Yibam, Basil says she becomes disqualified from a Kuhuno because she's entered an illegitimate marriage. Well, isn't that obvious? It's just a direct outcome of their previous Machlekes. So, why discuss this case? You're right. I did the Tana Chaltzu, Tana Nami Misyabu. Once we spelled out the effects of Chalitza, we discussed Yibam as well. Tanan Hasa. Now we're going to discuss the concept of Loisus Goitetu. There are various schools of thought in Torah, different Shittas. How do we reconcile them all? We have to be careful. Not to tear apart the Torah Chas Hashem, to create a double parallel track, to create Machlekes. Tanan Hasa, we learned in the Mishnah Megillah. Megillah and Nikras, Megillah can be read on any one of these days, starting from the 11th of Adar all the way to the 15th, depending on where you live and your circumstance. Not earlier than 11, not later than the 15th. So in a city they read on the 14th, on a walled city on the 15th, and a town, well, varies. How can you have different Zmane Kriya? Why don't we apply the pasuk of loisus good, which literally means don't afflict yourself, don't scrape your skin upon the passing of a loved one. But the drasha is loisus good to do. Don't make loisasra goodes a goodes. Don't group up. Don't group yourself. Don't make groups and groups amongst Kali Yisrael. Keep the achdus. So how can Chazal establish so many different zmanim for Kriya Samagila? Aren't you creating a goodness, a goodness, competing a goodness? Says the Gemara, what do you mean? Hi, Lois is going to do this word, Lois is going to do, but it's good needed for its own sake. The Amar Achmonad Pasek is telling you, Lois is going Don't harm yourself on account of a mace. How could you use it for a goodness, a goodness? In Cain, if only for that, Lema Kro, the Pasek would just say, Lois is going to do, without Siska. It's going to do. Don't scrape your skin. My loy sis go to do. Don't turn yourself into groups. Shema mina lachid the us. Apparently, it's coming for this. Ve'ema kuli lachid the us. Maybe it's only coming for this. Nothing to do with chabur alamis. Im kain if only for that. Lei makro loy segoy to do. Sorry, sis goy do. Don't group yourself into groups. My loy sis goy to do. So it's sis and goy to do. It's two separate. Halach is contained in this word, Shema Minatayat, is coming to tell us both. Sis Gaidu, don't turn yourself into competing groups. And Sis Gaidu, do, Gaidu, do, is telling you, don't make the Gdi, the don't, make a Chabur Alamitz. So how could Chazal go make various Zmanim for Kriya Samagila? What about Lois Gaidu? Kali Yisrael is meant to follow the same path, the same track. Observe Devam Taivim in unison. Amalei Surab Yechen responds, it's a good point, but what happened until that Mishnah? Until you got to that Mishnah, you never encountered such a concept of Mishnayas, that there were different Shittas? Adkan, until this Mishnah, Lashon Nisa, didn't you learn the other Mishnah Pesach, which precedes Megillah, which speaks about Erev Pesach? Makab shenagu lasis malacha, ba'arit Pesachim, ad chatzayis oisin, in a place where they had a minute to do malacha and Erev Pesach until chatzayis? Go ahead and do it. Makab shenagu shaloy lasis ain't oisin, in a place where they don't do malacha, you don't do what about that Mishnah? You didn't have some uh, akash on that Mishnah? How can we have different menhagim? Amalei um, Surish Lakish says, that wasn't a problem. I'm speaking about Kriya Samagil, which is absolute. 
You must read it on this day, on that day. The Amr of Shaman bar Abba Rabbi Yechon. We have a pasuk which says Lakayim es Yemei Hapurim Bizman Ayhem. There are various Zmanim for Purim. Based on this pasuk, Chazal established Zmanim Maharbe Tiknu Lem Chachamim. Chachamim established many Zmanim, which are absolute and non-negotiable. You have to read in your time, on your day. About Amr Slim Ben Haga, you quoted to me a Mishnah regarding Erev Pesach, which is merely a minik. Perhaps all agree. Strictly speaking, Kedumalach and Erev Pesach is a minik to be machmer. That's not considered agudais agudais. You can be machmer. It's not a conflicting shittas. That wasn't a problem. What do you mean? Vahasam lavi suravu? In the case of Malach and Erev Pesach, it doesn't constitute an Isr? It is absolute. But it's not. The mission says, but like the night of Dikas Chum, it's the night before the Erev Pesach. They say you can't do malacha, and they use lashon iser. Not just a minute, you can't. But with slow matir, they allow it. So back to the question: How can we do this? Agudis, agudis. Amalei Rabbi Yechon responds: Hasam. The case of malacha, it doesn't constitute agudis, agudis, because it can, it can be interpreted in a way where it's non conflicting. Haroy Aymar, a person who sees somebody being idle on that day, not doing malacha, will say, "Look, he's out of work. Malacha, the less he has nothing to do." Allah the Lasli. That doesn't create machlikas. Continue Rabbi Yechlan. What about the Mishnah Yevamis? Why don't you ask from there? Rabbi Shame Matir in Atzeres Lachem. Bissel Oisrim. Rabbi Shame allowed the Torah to marry the brother. Bissel Don allows. So we see that you can just do what you hold. Rish Lakish responds. They didn't actually do it. Misavis, do you really think also Rabbi Shame Kedivrim? Rabbi Shame carried out the Rishita. Why also Rabbi Shame Kedivrim? They never actually carried it out. They disagreed, in principle, but they didn't actually do it. Rabbi Yechon, apparently Rabbi Yechon held differently. Omar, Rabbi Yechon holds, also also. They actually did carry out their, their opinion. Bishamai allowed the Torah's Erev to be Messiah, but still didn't. So apparently this is not a concern of a goodness, a goodness. We'll continue as Hashem tomorrow. So, what did we learn today? We learned the Makar, for Tzorah, Tzorah, as she's part of from Yibim, either a Pasuk or a Svara. If the Erev left the scene, before the other wife arrived, She's not considered Tzorah's erva, according to some shittas, as long as she wasn't there at the point of Yibam. Akhtana falls to Yibam, and she's an erva. We don't allow her to do meon and reject, undo the entire marriage, because it can create confusion. Meshama, I say, a Tzorah's erva falls to Yibam, either because of the Pasuk, Hachutza, or because of a Svara, Eich Iser Chal Iser. And we got into the discussion of, Lois is going to do, Lois Sasu, Agudis, Agudis. All the best to you and much as luck.